So this is a Legion dungeon. After witnessing the return of the Burning Legion, Khadgar entered Karazan, Karazan in order to find knowledge against the demons. He was approached by the spirit of Medivh, who said that it is time to fulfill his destiny by becoming Azeroth's next guardian. Khadgar refused, and the spirit revealed himself to be, in fact, a dreadlord in disguise. The Archmage defeated him, stating that Karazhan will not become a stand for the demons. Later, after learning of the Pillars of Creation from Magni Bronzebeard and Ulduar, Khadgar returns to Karazhan with an adventurer to find their location, as Nala's knowledge of the Pillars had been entrusted to the Guardian of Tirisfal. But Khadgar's reminiscing about his apprenticeship years ago is interrupted when an echo of Mediv himself interferes and brings down Khadgar's wars, wards around the tower, allowing the Burning Legion to invade and try to stop them from finding the Pillars of the Pillars location. Khadgar is able to alter the tower's defenders to fight off the Burning Legion when he and the adventurer retrieve a book authored by Alodai, the first guardian, which contains information on the Pillars of Creation. By this time, Khadgar considers the Guardian's library at, at the least to be his. So return to Karazhan. Sometimes later, sometime later, Morose has been overlooking the neighborhood of Karazhan and noticed the forces of the Burning Legion marching towards Karazhan, which he saw as an omen heralding the return of Medivh. He invited them into the tower. The legion intended to use the Legion, pardon me, intended to use the tower as a conduit to teach each and every one of the count countless worlds that they had consumed during their burning crusade. As a conduit to each, pardon me, I gotta fucking slow down, and every one of the countless worlds. So they were gonna use it as a, as a giant anchor to all of the Legion worlds, so that they could more easily invade through Karazhan. That was the long game here. The Medivh severed that connection between Karazhan and those worlds. After he was killed by Moroz, Darius became a ghost and was granted the rank of, rank of mage posthumously. He then received the new charge of sprucing up Karazhan, in order for it to be a bit more inviting, in case Khadgar had further need of it. Now able to enter the tower safely, Darius enlisted the help of the adventurers in his task to clear the Tower of the Vermin inside. So this is a separate thing. To calm the ghosts in the Opera Hall and to disable the Curator once more. After the Argus campaign, Khadgar returns to Karazhan. Magni later visits him, and studying the tomes here, they came up with a plan to destabilize the Sword of Sargeras in Silithus. The wound. So we'll continue through here. Karazan Library is really the, the big thing here that is, that is noteworthy. It's the main thing we're here for. New Karazan Library is... is... it's pretty nuts. Maiden of Virtue down here still? Arriving in Karazhan to cleanse the tower of vice and corruption, the Titan Watcher was infuriated by Medivh's infamous parties and debaucheries. As her crusade for virtue seeks, seeks converts to her cause, the Maiden remains committed to purging immortality, using all the powers at her disposal. Immorality, pardon me. Using all the powers at her disposal. She's gonna purge the immorality. Let's kill this Maiden. And so begins your purification. Purification. Hmm. Something tells me, Maiden of Virtue, that I would not All like- All shall be sanctified! Step into the light, mortals. Um... By fire be cleansed! Oh, that's a nice change. Look at the lightning coming from her hands when she did that to me just now. Holy Light and Lightning are very much connected. Amon Thul's weapon? I'm telling you guys. Step into the light, mortals. I'm telling you. Amon Thul's weapon. Be cleansed. It's the real fing deal. Holy wrath. Give me some of that holy wrath. I will never relent. Hey look, she looks like Kali Amenethil. <laughs> Sorry. Pink and fluffy treads. Okay, let's check these side rooms here. I might have to go in order from the from the other side. Oh, here we go. Andrew and Lothar and King Prince Lane Rin at the time. Our friend lies just in here. Do 
It breaks my heart to see him like this. Medivh, slumber, dreaming endlessly. That's what's happening to Medivh right now. Dreaming endlessly. What's up, Sab Wiz Wizter? Another year of slumber. I wonder if Medivh will ever awaken. Another Does our old year. friend dream? Is he trapped in nightmares? How long do you have to dream? How long do you have to dream for before you start just having nightmares? Out of the sheer desire for something different. When a dream is held permanently in stasis. That's gotta be pretty f***ed up. Imagine, in a sense, being trapped in a dream. Knowing that you exist outside of that, but not being able to escape it. Pretty scary. Kind of lost here. Sorry, I get lost in new Karazhan. Apparently easier than old Karazhan. Same menagerie. A little spruced up. Curator's still here. Welcome to the... Terminate intruders! That's terrifying. Countermeasures deployed. Curator is no longer operational. Terminate intruders! Do we see Medivh putting this thing on? Now you're ready to oversee the tower's protection in my absence. Defense protocols activated. Hmm. I must remember to shut you down from time to time. Overuse might cause you to become erratic. I like the way that they illustrated it in this one here, where you come in and everything is so completely spatially f***ed. So there's a giant f***ing rift into what I can only describe as the nether space below. It's kind of terrifying. There's some infused pyromancers hanging out. I don't know what they're infused with. I guess fell. Obviously the Legion is in here trying to use this place to connect all their shit. This is who I am. I was tainted from birth, polluted from before my conception, a bad seed grown to bear bitter fruit. Can't tell if it's Medivh monologuing or Sargeras. <laughs> Shade of Medivh here. And here's where shit gets fucking weird. This is where temporal and spatial manipulation. This is like a great example of of something that kind of can like f your mind, you know. This is the type of magic, and this is this is humans that have done this, and potentially working with the Legion to do this. But when you think about the power of Titans who specialize in this type of magic, just imagine what kind of insane illusions and mind-bending things they could craft. They could make an entire reality. That seems like it's real, and you wouldn't know that it isn't. Probably the most single important room in the entire game. Karazhan Library. Okay. Here we are. So, this room has a lot of interesting things. Um, I'm gonna clear out the trash really quick. So in Karazhan uh, Library, down here, you have a couple of different spell books. I think these spell books represent different magical schools. This one seeming, you know, based on its appearance and the runes that appear, I would say arcane or even shadow. This one is uh, pretty clearly uh, bell, obviously. Demonic magics. This one appears to be order something of that nature. It's blue and bound in a book with a lot of metal bindings, cogs and stuff on it. I feel like that certainly suggests order to me. And then over here we have this one, which is replaced with a metallic claw hand. 
I don't know if this is like a reference to something. Spirit, maybe? Maybe Order? Could I mean, I feel like it kind of looks more like Order. Not sure, though. It is that blue. It's the, it's the right color. And then over here, we have the one that I think was supposed to be on this pedestal. Terminator. Yeah, Terminator reference, I guess, huh? And this, I don't know. It almost looks like uh, that kind of three domination rune. This almost looks like shadow or something. Void, maybe? And that one's on the desk over here, removed from its pedestal, so perhaps one that was of particular interest. Also in the, in the library, you'll notice that there's a couple common designs you'll see. Uh, you'll see this kind of star or sun-looking icon symbol. You'll see the singular, perhaps, moon with a swirl on it. Could represent the Emerald Dream. You see this crescent moon, which we've seen a loon take the form of as well. And then another one are these twin moons, which I would think maybe... I'm not really sure how to interpret these. I'm, you know, I'm open to, obviously, other interpretations, but... Then you have these, which kind of looks like, you know, a loon in the, in the blue child to me. But it could also just be celestial designs and not mean anything, but there is also another kind of star shape right in the center, right underneath the globe of Azeroth, which is above. And so if we go up there, Anshe, Musha, and the Blue Child, and then the sun, maybe? Out of curiosity, how many pillars are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, six, eight, and nine. We'll go up here. And this is where the most interesting stuff is. This is where we get to the planets. Now, we've seen these before, remember? We saw some of these in the Halls of Lightning. Halls of Stone. We saw some of these in uh, Ulduar. A couple things we didn't see. This guy here. This kind of shadowed version of Azeroth. Now, this could represent, I guess, a couple things. This could be... It's kind of green, with like a mist around it. This could be the Emerald Dream. Something of that nature. Could be representation of shrouded Azeroth. Yeah, maybe maybe the shroud itself on the outside of it. Maybe this is a, a representation of one of the layers. Maybe this is another one, right? You've got the, the shroud here. You've got the net here. So perhaps these are two, two of the mechanisms which are being depicted on the massive rotating rings in the center of this room, which is very clearly Azeroth. And keep in mind, when you look around it... There are these two same celestial objects. Two things that I would recommend we look at as the Emerald Dream and the Shadowlands over there. Remember, in this Karazhan one, though, the Shadowlands is only depicted with two rings around it. Kind of interesting. The Legion one has three. There's also all these other planets. One, two, three, four, five. Planetoid, planetary bodies, orbiting bodies. These are things that I believe are all around Azeroth. They're moons, and maybe even these worlds. And look at what we have here. Amon Thule, who's got the ring, and then the shrouded kind of nether ring. Norganon, who only has the regular ring and no nether ring. Curious, that's who I would attribute these to. I could have it backwards. That could be Norganon, that could be Amon Thule. I could have them backwards. Keep that in mind. But I'm pretty positive that's who these two are. This, I think, is probably either Kazgaroth or Agrimar. I would probably lean towards Kazgaroth, given the shaping and forging of worlds was probably necessary to the machinations of these two. He has the double shroud around it, so maybe double bound in some capacity. Could also be that the... that the... I mean, Sargeras does appear as quite orange, but there's a reason why I say this isn't Sargeras. Then we move to what I would say is more than likely... Aonar, if I had to guess. 
It's a realm of life, I would assume. Could even be Drenor. It's got two, sh two kind of the shroud rings around it as well. They also are depicted with moons, most of these. I don't know if you noticed. Asgaroth does not have any, it appears, if that's who that is. Amonthul has the one moon. Norganon has the two, or vice versa. Kazgaroth has none. Drenor, or whatever this is, could this could be Elunaria? I, I believe it to be Aenar's planet, regardless of what it is. What are the three continents on the globe? I'm not sure. It almost kind of looks like a sideways Azeroth, honestly. If that's Northrend up here, for instance, it almost looks like a sideways Azeroth, but... Doesn't it? Regardless, another orbiting body of some sort. These are very... Even if they don't each correspond to a Titan, what I think... I think they do. I think that they're very important. Someone can figure something out from this, I'm sure. The crescent moon on Norganon's globe. Could it be something referencing a loon being there in the past, perhaps? We better go to these planets eventually. I hope that that's what we do after the last Titan. On to the next one here. We have this kind of... More cooled, kind of whitish. I guess in my mind I could see this being Agrimar. Uh, I guess the reason why I go that route is because it's next to the one that I think is Sargeras. The red one. This one is not in Halls of Stone, Halls of Lightning, or Ulduar. It's the only one of the primary planets here that is not there. And that's pretty interesting to me. You also have this one, which is red and blue. I think a lot of people... I've seen, say, immediately, Argus. Whoops. Also, one thing I just noticed about these globes, the two that I think are Agrimar and Sargeras do not have rings around them at all. See that? And at this point, hypothetically, Agrimar and Sargeras would be flame and freed from the supposed you know, caught machinations of the Titans. Here, I could see this even being Golganeth. Maybe Golga- I don't even know. There's different ways you could even do this, man. There's different ways you could do this. You could even say Kazgaroth and Golganeth came from the same fucking planet. The elements all four being together in a capacity would be interesting. This one planet being the manifestation of the four elements in the Titan capacity could be kind of cool. Which would leave the door open for who that orange one is. I still think this could be Kazgaroth and th that could be Golganeth. Maybe they should, maybe I should consider this. I don't know though, this has, I just really think that the, the oceans make me think Aonar. But I don't know, I could be wrong, I could be wrong. It only has the one moon. Got the one moon here, the crescent moon. None on Sargeras's at all. And then two of the same type of moon around this one. And two of the same type of moons for Golganeth, considering that he's Lord of Sea and Sky. I could see something there, kind of making sense of that. I don't know, I could kind of make sense of that, I guess. And then you got these two. And then the big one in the middle, of course. So I, I really think that these are meant to be... Like, this is a, a huge, like, celestial, like, planetarium type thing, I guess. It's... I think a really, really big hint at the cosmology of the of the universe and how it works and these planets, I think the fact that there's enough of them to correspond to each titan is kind of a hint. Sargeras, the moonless child. It seems to me there must be a specific reason to why Azeroth is depicted twice. Well, one thing I thought was that maybe this was meant to represent, like, at one point I thought maybe the Shadowlands, sometimes now I say maybe the Emerald Dream, because it's kind of green, and it's the same as what Azeroth looks like now. Part of me wants to say like, oh, the Black Empire days, but like, it should have been one continent if that were the case. You'd think they'd go through the effort to do that, I don't know. But if I'm not mistaken, this one also does not appear in Ulduar for the others. Perhaps it did, but I don't think so. Sargeras is the moon, or the sun, perhaps. Though some of these planets could already be destroyed by Sargeras. Maybe. Unless they, like Elunaria, are shrouded. They could very well be. He could have sought to un undo the uh, 
the tethers of these realms to any semblance of reality. Like I've said before, I think seeking to undo the corruption of the world in order to help free... I mean, I think that's going to come to come into play with Azeroth. If, if the, if the, let me put it this way. If the whole world of Azeroth gets consumed into the void, Azeroth herself is also going to get consumed in, into the void and maybe even herself morph into what people refer to as a void titan. Okay? That's pretty f***ing terrifying. So we need to make sure that the void does not eat Azeroth. But we also have to be careful to probably not let any other forces completely take over Azeroth, right? So, I like to think that the realm, similar to the Eternals in the Shadowlands, that the realm is kind of like bound to the deity. And if the world of Azeroth and, and pain inflicted physically upon the world is tied to Azeroth, as we're kind of led to believe, then I think that helping to free her from any type of corruption, literally saving the world itself to save the soul inside, you know, could end up being a pretty big plot. Though some of these, yeah, yeah. Interesting how the upcoming island is already on that map. The upcoming island? What do you mean? Are you talking about that? Yeah, Karazhan is awesome, dude. And I, like I've said before, I think that the different runes and designs on the different rings orbiting Azeroth, I think are um, a suggestion of maybe the different type of powers or type of barrier that's in place. I also want to note, and it's pointed out by others, that there is also a sphere on the inside of this thing, kind of rotating in a circle. And the design of that sphere is interesting, to say the least. It almost looks like a giant metallic ball with no holes in it, no entrances or exits, like a solid metal core or something. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Gotta catch them all. But yeah, Legion felt the arcane powers of the elves because of the well, right? That's what they say, yeah. They say. And the fact that the core of the world is is spinning opposite to kind of the outer shell is interesting. The whole thing gives big Dyson Sphere vibes. Like a prison? Yeah. You know, it's said the old gods were all entombed within monolithic stone prisons. Would Azeroth really be that much different? So yeah, Karazhan Library. Highly recommend. Alright, forward we march. Come spend some time in Karazhan Library. It's a good place to ponder ideas. Think about the cosmic scale. Cosmic conflict and titans and all those things. Secret fell hunter skins were cool. There's ones in Antorus as well. Oh shit! I'm gonna have to do that. Look at this shit. Yeah, it looks very much like the, uh, like the hole in the sky to the, to the maw. Looks just like the maelstrom. You think that's a... Like a hole into another layer of reality. This could be like a big sphere underneath us. It appears to be potentially spherical. Like a big cloud orb. Is this up or down, though? <laughs> Jump and find out. 
Uh oh, we're going through the veil, boys. Oh, through transcended realities, which I do so enjoy. I love this area, ironically, because I fucking hate the chess event. But this is much better because you look, you just fight them. Hey, look, it's a rook. King's court. Much better. And look at this shit. The walkway just fing constructs itself. Where the fuck are we? Where where are we? <laughs> we are going into the twisting nether. This is some interdimensional warp level weird shit. But guess who's here? Listen to what Medivh says to him. I've left so many fragments of myself throughout this tower. Medivh? I will open the way. While you battle that fiend, I will sever the tower's connection to Legion worlds. I suggest we be quick about it. This isn't an echo of Medivh. That's Medivh. I've left so many fragments of myself throughout this tower. There Arch is much to be done. Archmage Cadgar could feel it. It's a fragment, yes, but how many times can you break something up before you no longer consider it to be that thing anymore? It's him, but it's not him? Yeah, but... but what? How much does it really matter? Who knows? And could he be reborn? If, if... One battle remains. One final conquest. The grand design. The grand design. Is Adum the Watcher? The all seeing Viz Adum was commanded by Kiljaden to capture Karazan and tap into the tendrils of lay energy. Tendrils of lay energy woven through the tower. Should he succeed in anchoring the structure to the myriad of worlds held by the Legion, the Dark Titan's army will overrun Azeroth and leave little more than a smoldering husk. Eye of Command, marked with a raven silhouette. Visidum's Mind Stone, Rift Stabilization Shard, Unbound Reality Mask. Top of New Karazhan's way cooler. You have Legion ships floating in the f***ing distance. Pretty sick. I have foreseen your world's doom. Got some fell burned worlds. Got at least one over there. It's what it appears to be from this distance anyway. At least one, anyway. Feel the grip of entropy! is pretty sick, dude. Could also be Argus. Well, there's that one over there, too. In a giant ship, kind of poking through. Interesting, dude. Could be the f***ing top of Antorus, for all we know. Enough interruptions! The grand design must be realized! Sargeras and the Legion have their own design. Grand design. Behold, the doorway opens to your doom. <coughs> uh, um, could not foresee such an end. The demons have been purged from Karazan. Thank you, champions. Medivh, you would be a welcome ally in our war against the Legion. Oh, my path leads elsewhere. Besides, Azeroth has found her guardian in you, young trust. I have made it clear before. I do not want such power. 
I got the thing. Let's go. You have all the power you will ever need, Khadgar. It is your heart, your courage, that makes you this world's guardian. And a better one than I ever was. I... I don't know what to say, Madiv. Enough sentiment. Hear these words before I depart. It may be simpler to shut a door than to pass through it. But sometimes, a step into the unknown is required to break the bonds of fate. There is much that lies ahead for all of us. Farewell. Hmm. The bonds of fate. Hmm. I must consider those words. Until next time, champions. Medivh flies off as a raven into the Twisting Nether. He said there's so much that lies ahead for all, for all of us. And what Medivh says to Khadgar there is instrumental. The Lord of Ravens will turn the key. It's part of the multifaceted meaning of that quote, I think, from Ilganoth. Khadgar needed to hear that because at the bottom of the tomb of Sargeras, he has to make the decision. It may be simpler to shut a door than to pass through it, but sometimes a step into the unknown is required to break the bonds of fate. So, at the bottom of the tomb of Sargeras, when the portal is there, and Velen becomes enraged and chases after, and Khadgar says, we can't follow him. Illidan says, you don't understand. We don't have a choice. We have to go through. And I believe that this is one of the many meanings that all tie together to the three or four or five characters that all connect to the Lord of Ravens. Medivh said this to Khadgar so that he would have the wisdom to step through. This is one of the coolest f***ing dungeons ever.